Hello there, kia ora. Pull one out for the TVNZ News website. It's on the chopping block because TVNZ needs to find $30 million. It's an amount so big you can actually count the number of times it's been a prize in lotto on one hand. The website itself is just one of a number of changes being proposed as the state broadcaster looks to continue their transformation into the digital age of streaming with less of a focus on linear broadcast. But there's a real risk involved as well, that we end up with a partially state-funded Netflix knockoff. And I don't just mean in a way that, well, essentially sets up another paid subscription service for content that produces six episodes of a show every two years for us to binge in a night and still somehow manages to lose millions of dollars. What we've seen in the US and the UK is a model that's based on paid subscription services, that they throw out advertising and weekly release schedule and branding opportunities that bring in actual funding, because that's how changing audiences interact with media now. So it's become an expectation that makes it almost impossible to ensure any kind of profitability. That model was actually designed specifically to kill profit from traditional broadcasters like TVNZ, but that profit also means investment in areas like our news services, well, it's kind of in question. In the past 12 months, we've already seen the loss of News Hub and industry shrinkage as audience models change, because while the way audiences connect with content might be evolving, there's a universal truth in there that more people would rather get something for free than pay for it. It's why we might roll our eyes at advertising on TikTok or YouTube, but the vast majority would rather deal with those ads than pay for a premium service, which is what the traditional broadcast model for TV was. And there are ways TVNZ could bring back profits as they evolve, especially if they're cognizant of the traps of replicating the Netflix model that Disney, Amazon, Paramount Plus, the BBC, and others have fallen into. But they all cost money which TVNZ doesn't have. Original fiction and non-fiction content that has weekly releases, paid and unpaid user options for constant access that also appeals to advertisers. Genre types that aren't the focus of other providers like I don't know, reality and game shows, late night infotainment talk shows and live sports. All of these have growing audiences online after all, and finding niche markets and growing those, and focusing on genres like science fiction, or rainbow programming, or nostalgia-fueled content, they're all options that could work, but a lack of funds also means less willingness to try new things. The risk is just too high. Our access to news is important. It's what keeps us informed and helps us make better informed decisions. But the model we have here for TVNZ relies on funding from outside of the government to supplement the specific government funding to provide a news service. They're symbiotic. And if one doesn't perform, the other simply isn't viable to maintain. But 30 million is a lot to risk on drastic change, especially when this is somewhat uncharted territory. But if we end up with a Netflix clone, our main source of local content from TVNZ well, it's going to fail, and it doesn't have that Netflix level of money to save it. Wait, you're still here? It's over. Find another video.